When it comes time to server side render your React applications, you might think that you have two main options. One option is to use the full fledged framework, for example, Next.js, that comes with its own API solution as well as its own routing solution. Or alternatively, you can use something low level and use Create React app and try to integrate it with your own server and your preferred routing solution. Fortunately, there is a third alternative called Razzle that does exactly that, which allows you to bring your own API server as well as your own preferred routing solution and still gives you the live reload both on the server as well as the client. So let's take a look. Now getting started with Razzle is pretty easy. We run this command and we create Razzle app, give a name for our application, which we are calling demo Razzle. And because most of the things on this channel use TypeScript, we're going to use TypeScript for this as well by specifying minus minus example with TypeScript. This will create a new Razzle project for us with all the dependencies installed ready to go. Once the installation is complete, we simply cd into this new project directory that's been created and open it up within our IDE. Now the first thing that I want to discuss is the key difference between this TypeScript template and the default JavaScript one. Actually, Razzle doesn't really care if we use TypeScript or JavaScript. It supports the transpilation as well as bundling of either of these options equally well. And the only reason TypeScript exists within this project is for type checking and that's not actually invoked by Razzle in any way. We are using TSC raw that is provided by the TypeScript package. Additionally, within the tsconfig file, you can see that the option no emit is set to true. That is the TypeScript compiler will only do the type checking and not generate any JavaScript as that is something that is done by Razzle natively. And that summarizes pretty much all you would need to do in order to migrate an existing JavaScript Razzle project to a TypeScript Razzle project. With that out of the way, let's look at the main entry point for our application, which is source server.tsx file. Within this server.tsx file, we have an Express.js server, and Razzle is not particularly married to use Express. This is just what is provided as a reference. Now, within this Express server, the key functionality of server side rendering is contained within this render app function. Within this function, we are simply using render to string, which is something that is provided by React Tom server to render some markup that we then return as a part of some HTML. We use a feature that is provided by a React Router called Static Router, and we render it by providing an empty context object and the request URL. And the reason for doing that is if this URL matches some redirect within our React application, then context.url will be populated with that and we can return that redirect. Otherwise, we will simply return the markup that is rendered by React. Digging further into the template, our main front end application code is contained within the app component. And right now, our app has a single route created by React Router and it's pointing to the home component. This is the section where we will be adding more routes if we wanted to. And as you can see, it is a pretty simple usage of the React Router. Digging into the home component, it's a pretty basic component designed specifically for just demoing some HTML being rendered by React. Now let's take a look at the dev workflow that is provided by Razzle. We open up the terminal and execute npm start, and it will do two things. Start the TypeScript compiler in parallel mode that will only be doing the type checking and also execute Razzle start, which will be doing the bundling as well as the live reloading of the front end as well as our server code. Once the compilation completes, we can visit localhost 3000 to see our application running in action. And of course, as we expected, the home page is a pretty basic demo page. But the cool thing about it is that this is actually being rendered on the server and we can verify that by opening up the network tab and looking at the HTML that is returned as a part of the first request that is made to the server. Now, of course, Razzle supports live reloading of our front end resources. So if you modify the code within home.tsx and jump back to the browser, you can see the updated HTML. But that's something that you could do with pretty much create React app or Vite or anything else. But the cool thing about Razzle is that we can jump into our server code and make modifications over here and this will be live reloaded as well. For example, we can create a new API entry point called API slash hello that will always return the string. Hi there. And as soon as we save this file, we can jump into the browser and see our string that is returned by this new API endpoint. Another thing that we can demo is how we can add additional routes to this particular application. And to do that, let's jump back into our code and create a new file called fancy.tsx that will contain the component that we will render for this new route. And as you can see, this is a truly fancy React function component. Now, in order to turn this component into a new route, no surprises, we jump into our app.tsx, create a new React router route, 
and for the path slash fancy, we render this fancy component. And because our server is still live reloading, we simply visit slash fancy and you can see this new fancy component being rendered under a new route. Now we've looked at the various features of the start script that is provided by Resil, but one thing that I want to point out is that all of the code that we've looked at is actually under our control. We can modify server.tsx to replace express with something else. We can modify app.tsx to replace react router with something else if that is what we wanted. Now let's jump in and look at how we can bundle our application for production. Now for obvious reasons, the script that we are going to be running is called build. It is going to use the TypeScript compiler to do some type checking and follow that up by executing Resil build. It will actually generate two bundles, one for the client side JavaScript and one for the backend server code. Once the build completes, we can start our production server by executing npm start prod. And as you can see, it pretty much just runs build slash server.js, which is our server bundle, which will also start serving our front-end resources. One thing worth pointing out is that Resil doesn't exist at production runtime. It only exists during development in the form of Resil start and while doing a production bundle in the form of Resil build. Our production server is just going to be Node.js and the code that we write. Once this boots up, you can see that our application is being served on localhost 3000. And if you follow this link, you can see that it is the same application that we saw when we were doing our development. Now, one final thing that you might be curious about is if you can change the localhost 3000 port for our production build. And of course, if you jump into our source index.ts file, you can see that this is where the port 3000 is specified and we can easily replace it with anything else by using the port environment variable. And that's pretty much all that you need to know about Resil. Honestly, it's a pretty neat utility if you have your own server and client library preferences. However, if you are looking for a more full-featured framework that is built on top of React, here is a lesson that gets you started on Next.js. Thanks for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.